All right, let's take a look at the material grid list in this video. The grid list is basically a two dimensional list view that arranges cells into grid based layout. Now the first step is to import the module. So in material.module.ts, import mat grid list module and add it to the material array. Mat grid list module. Now we can create a grid list. The component is mat grid list. And this component requires a calls attribute which specifies the number of columns in the grid. Let's go with two columns. So calls is equal to two. As children to this component, we specify mat grid tile components. Tile one. And similarly, let's create three more. Also, to be able to clearly see the grid, let's add a background color to the tiles. So in the CSS file, mat grid tile, background color, light blue. Now, if you save this and take a look at the browser, you can see the grid with two columns and two rows. The question is, how did it create the two rows? For a grid, we always specify the number of columns and the number of rows is determined by how many columns we want and the number of tiles specified. Since we have four tiles and two columns, it can fit only two tiles in each row. Hence, it creates an additional row to fit the next two tiles. If you were to have five tiles, there would be three rows. So the number of rows is determined by some basic math. Of course, you can also specify how many rows or columns each tile should take up. That can be specified using the row span and call span attributes. On tile one, if I set row span is equal to two and take a look at the browser, you can see that it takes up two rows instead of one. Similarly, if I set call span is equal to two, you can see that it takes up two columns instead of one. When specifying call span though, you need to make sure that it does not exceed the calls attribute. If it does, it throws an error. All right, next let's talk about the height of each row in the grid. By default, the height of a row is equal to the width of a column. However, you can override this using the row height attribute and you can specify one of the three values. The first one is a straightforward value. So row height is equal to 100 pixels. Take a look at the browser and you can see that each row will be 100 pixels tall. The second option is to specify the row height as a ratio with respect to the column width. For example, row height is equal to 2 is to 1. This implies that the row height is half the column width. If the column width is 200 pixels, then the row height is 100 pixels. Take a look at the browser and you can clearly see from each style that the height looks half the width. The third option is to fit the height based on the container. So row height is equal to fit, but this time we also need to specify a height for the container. So style height 200 pixels. Now if we take a look at the browser, the rows are fit into the container height of 200 pixels. So each row has a height of 100 pixels. If there were four rows, each row would be 50 pixels so as to fit the total container height of 200 pixels. All right, the last attribute I want to discuss on a grid list is the gutter size. That is spacing between the tiles. We can specify gutter size using the gutter size property. Let's go with gutter size is equal to 10 pixels. If you save the file and take a look at the browser, you should now see additional spacing between the different tiles. All right, that is about the grid list in Angular Material. 
Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.